Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your entrepreneurship tutor, Professor Henry Bruce of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. We can use water analysis to plan development for our counties. Replace counties, put their countries. Yes, SWOT analysis is a tool that can be used for planning, strategic planning and all that. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, that's what SWOT stands for. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Yes, some Kenyan counties use SWOT in their strategic planning. Others don't. Bungoma, my county, for example, did not seem to have explicitly used it in the 2018-2022 strategic plan. But no, not that it has. it is a must. We can choose to use this tool or not use it. But it's a good tool. The purpose of SWOT analysis Primarily, it's used as a planning tool to design the strategy needed for an organization to grow. It identifies the internal and external factors which may directly or indirectly affect growth or development in the form of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and the threats prevailing in the environment. The prime aim to do SWOT analysis is also to make use of organizations' resources in the best possible way. One way to do this analysis is to involve the people from various aspects of the organization, for then they will own and implement SWOT-generated strategies. What am I saying? Yes, some organizations just use a consultant to do all the SWOT analysis and then ask the organization to implement it. It improves ownership if the consultant worked with members or key members of the organization. So that's what I'm saying. One way to do this analysis is to involve people from various aspects of the organization for then they will own and implement SWOT generated strategies. So we're talking of SWOT, you know, a three by three matrix. In the first cell of the nine cells, as a guide, you write here the objective for which you are doing the SWOT analysis. The, on the second cell of the top row, strengths, which are actually internal positive conditions to bring or contribute towards goal achievement. They depend on internal efforts. The last cell of the last column, first row, last column has weaknesses. These are internal negative conditions that will block goal achievement. Again, they are internal efforts. Down the first column, second cell are opportunities. These are external positive conditions that can be tapped by the organization to achieve goals. They are out there, do not depend on you, but it's for you to see them and bring them on board. Threats, the external negative conditions that may block goal achievement. You know, again, they are out there. You just have to cope with them. There's little you can do to them or with them internally. And therefore, having done that, we can see now we are remaining with four cells. One, two, three, four. These cells are the cells that now where you generate your strategies. Look at this uh, cell two of column two. Maxi maxi strategies. All we are saying is that you have strengths, you have opportunities, why don't you use them the maximum? Both of them. Maximum use of your strength, maximum use of your uh, opportunities. So, ask 
how can my organization maximize the use of its strengths to tap the opportunity to the maxima and therefore achieve the goal? These mini maxi weaknesses, how can my organization minimize its weaknesses in order to tap the opportunity to the maxima? There are things that will be adjusting. Here, you are going on the offensive because you have everything. Just go on the offensive. Here, you have to adjust some weaknesses or the weaknesses. Because remember, a full liter of pure clean water and just one drop of poison in that liter, the whole liter will become poisonous. You know, one weakness only in the organization might destroy or mar or block the achievement of uh, the, the, the objective. Therefore, weaknesses have to be addressed, either converted to strengths or minimized. Therefore, we are saying mini, minimize the weaknesses so that we are able to tap the opportunity the maxima. This maxi mini, you have strengths, but there are threats out there. Generate strategies that can use your strength the maximum to cope and minimize the threats. And here is mini mini. Minimize the weaknesses, minimize threats. These are offensive strategies because you know the low hanging fruits. You have the strength, you have the opportunities, just go on the offensive. These ones are adjustment strategies. Please don't go on the offensive before you can address some of the weaknesses or minimize some of the weaknesses. So adjustment strategies. Internally adjustment your weaknesses. And here, you know, you have your strength, but there are threats. Defend against them. Defensive strategies. Defend yourself against the threats. But here is survival. You have to survive. Strategies that make you survive amid the weaknesses and the threats. So, this is therefore the structure of the uh, new or value added SWOT format, SWOT analysis format. Let me take Bungoma, my county. This call it a mini SWOT analysis for Bungoma. And I'm talking to my incoming Government, government, government of Bungoma. We need employment. We need to develop the nation, the county, so that we create employment and alleviate poverty. Yes, unemployment is big. Poverty is high. Not just Bungoma, many other counties too. So I put here my objective. Of I want to cause development to create employment and elevate poverty. What are my strengths that can I can look to to achieve this? I have an agricultural strong agricultural culture. Yes, people in Bungoma love agriculture. It's the backbone of the economy, actually, at the national level too. So there is that knowledge of agriculture agriculture culture, people wanting to do agriculture. There is also strong professional base. We have quite a number of professionals at home and in the diaspora. That's a strength that we can use. Bungoma is a youthful population and indeed Kenya is a youthful population. The youthful people can be tapped into development. Bungoma is strategically located, you know, next to Uganda, not far from Sudan, the county surrounding it. This strategic location, we should be making use of it. But then, among many other weaknesses, our traditional agriculture, you know, we weak traditional agriculture, the culture for agriculture is there, but we're dealing with only traditional agriculture, subsistence, traditional crops. That's a weakness. Weak industrial development. 
our industrial base is weak. Weak tourism, weak service sector and weak technological base. And then we have opportunities. Like I explained, positive conditions out there. Development partners are there. Our export is unexploited out there. Export is unexp I mean, uh, unexploited export opportunities. There is positive global technological trends out there. And there is CDF and other remitted from the national government. These are opportunities that we can use to achieve our development, to increase employment, to alleviate poverty. But there are threats, serious ones. Weather changes, the weather changes. National and devolution behavior, like the national government is not ready to let go all the devolution. Money is not coming from the top. There is unpredictable economic conditions, global, you know, population growth. Some people may want put, to say population growth is internal and is a weakness, but I'm putting it here because uh, of cultural and other conditions. I choose to put it under threat. One can put it under weaknesses. The land size dwindling. As the population grows against the constant land, the farming land is dwindling. That becomes a threat. And now, having done the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and the threats, I am now left with the now choice, matching the strengths and opportunities to get my maximum max strategies, matching weaknesses with opportunities to get my mini max strategies. Weaknesses and threats, my mini mini strategies. Strengths and threats, my max mini strategies. Yes. Now, let me attempt that straight away. I'm doing my Bungoma strategic threat analysis. I've listed my strengths. I've listed my weaknesses. I've listed my opportunities. And I've listed my threats. Now I go in and generate those max max strategies. Because of the size here, I'll postpone it and do it on the next page. I generate mini max weaknesses merged with opportunities. I get mini max strategies. I'll do it on the next page because of space. And max mini and mini mini strategies. So let's go. My maxi, maxi strategies, when I'm matching strengths with opportunities, I look at modern agriculture awareness campaign. The populace has an agricultural culture, but they are doing traditional agriculture. So I start campaigns for modern agriculture so that they are aware. You know, I select institutions or even farmers to demonstrate that modern agriculture like corn farming, vertical farming across this, a village or so. I create professional desks in appropriate ministries. We have strong professional base. Ministries, agriculture, industry, cooperative. I create professional desks. They will come in handy in developing the county. I attract the youth. We have a youthful population. I attract the youth like digitizing agriculture. The youth are not attracted to agriculture because it is looked at as labor. It is dirty. So modernizing agriculture, drone agriculture, for example, you know, vertical farming, like I'm saying, you know, e-commerce in agriculture, e-marketing, all those strategies will attract our youth. Private public partnerships in agriculture including R&D, water harvesting, transport, ICT, etc., etc. Marketing. Look at non-traditional market destinations. Again, through digitalization. You know, how can I deal with the middlemen? Strategies to deal with the middlemen. 
so that the farmer is not fleeced. Is it e-commerce? Is it Soko Hewani? Organization for organizational forms, you know, like cooperatives. Of course, we need water harvesting for irrigation. I come up with policies like every new house built must have a gutter. I, and I, incentives for people building houses with gutters. We collect that rainwater, runoff water, we can use it. Health, agriculture, human resource, of course, the health sector. I inject strategies in the health sector that keep my human resource in agriculture healthy. And with all this, I'm using good development partners, writing probably proposals for funding, opening up the unexploited export opportunities so that my modern agriculture can now get destinations, you know, tapping from global technological trends, using the CDF to achieve all these strategies. Max, max. How about minimax the weaknesses, you know? Agricultural R&D, so that we move away from traditional agriculture. The right crops for planting. For example, why plant maize on one acre and harvest only once in a year, yet you could grow, let say, beans and harvest three times in a year? Livestock. Why not go zero grazing? You have just one acre. With, where else would you graze your extensive livestock? You know, farm technologies, techniques, you know, productivity improvement, value addition, new export. I inject resources into modernizing agriculture. Rural industrialization, we have weak rural industrial development. You know, let's say agricultural cluster based industrialization. Let's say based on one core crop, like sunflower, an oil crop. Sunflower alone will lead to vegetable oil production. And when vegetable oil production goes on pressing the, 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 the sunflower, you remain with cake. That cake will be used to make animal feed, fish feed, poultry feed, Hence, you are now already entering into the dairy value chain, fish value chain, poultry value chain, just by one single cluster uh, industrialization unit based on our core crop. Value addition demonstrations. Why should I, why should Bungoma send its tomatoes to go to be processed in Naivasha and then we bring back no tomato sauce. Culture and education. Yes, we are now entering the culture education sector. We are developed education at least at that level. Why not flagship programs? You know, processing, for example. You know, green agriculture, for example. Yes, our debate institutions should, we should develop flagship programs that help uh, produce techniques, technology, for agriculture. Infrastructure, including border connections. Our borders that we're going to look for non-traditional export destinations. Our borders need to facilitate that smooth border flow. Infrastructure, yes, that's at the infrastructure, including the border connections. Again, PPPP, agricultural R&D, water harvesting, transport ICT, and so on and so forth. Develop tourism products in the tourism circuit. We are addressing the weak tourism, you know. Develop bottom-up industrial development. Like, if we cannot fully process something, we can do cottage industries, half processing, crude processing, and that this bottom-up will feed the top, the big industries. In other words, we cannot focus on bottom-up alone. It has to be bottom-up, top-down, so that we meet 
make sure that the bottom of the pyramid is producing for the top to process. Maximum strategies, you know, water harvesting for irrigation, I've already uh, mentioned it. When a strategy repeats itself in all of this, that becomes a flagship a strategy. Professional desks in the ministries again, it becomes very important. It has appeared in two or one other strategy. Focus on it. We are not tapping the professionals in the county to the maximum. Let's look at them. Lobbying for full devolution of remittances. You know, 15%, 20%, our MPs, you know, are lobbied to fight nationally anyway. Modern agriculture techniques, the lands are dwindling. Land size is dwindling. We cannot keep the same techniques of agriculture on dwindling lands. Alternative domestic fuel to save forests. Yes, the weather changes because of cutting forests. We introduce new methods or new sources of fuel like charcoal briquettes from agro waste. And that will fight the ordinary charcoal and will re reduce, you know, the weather changes due to deforestation. You know, development of non-traditional destinations of agro-processed exports. We look now for new sources of our, uh, our exports, the Uganda, Sudan, and beyond. Yes, and then many, many. Again, all those weaknesses, all those threats, we may not be able to do it on our own internally. Why don't we go to PPP strategies? The private sector could develop tourism on agreed terms. The private sector could develop services on agreed terms. As I said, private sector may make even professionals in the diaspora at home and so on and so forth. Government university industry linkages. The universities can develop weather mitigation strategies, greenhouses and so forth. Universities can develop modern agricultural practices. So let's not leave the PPP out of the equation. Let's not leave our universities out of the equation. And I'm just speaking of university. There are other institutions. So th they will help mitigate again the weaknesses which the government alone may not be able to, to do. Yes, you can actually do a SWOT analysis to improve yourself, your life, personal SWOT analysis. You can do a personal SWOT analysis or a student post analysis for choosing a career, careers masters at schools. You can do your SWOT analysis to start a business. In other words, SWOT analysis is a strong tool that if well done can help a lot. If you have followed my presentation, we have gone beyond just listing opportunities, strengths, threats, and all that, the traditional way of doing SWOT analysis. We list the elements and then we brainstorm on how to match those elements and create strategies out of those. Thank you for listening. Have a sweatful day, won't you?